Hello, welcome back to the DIY hosting of a WordPress website. This is the first practical video in this video course uh, where we'll follow on from the introduction video in which you will have uh, done a few things to get going and get started and start with a fresh Raspberry Pi with Debian installed. At this point, you will have a user called Pi on your Raspberry Pi and hopefully you've set up a secure password for that user. But nonetheless, it's not really suitable for external access to the world, which we will need to provide to the Pi in order to host a website and an email server. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to disable username and password authentication on the Pi, and we're going to enable public-private key authentication. Why would we do that? Well, the main reason is it's much stronger security, particularly for a small project like this. You will make it so that the Raspberry Pi won't even accept a username and a password combination. As such, malicious users attempting to guess your password or attempt a brute force attack won't be able to do that on a password because the server won't accept a password. It will only accept a key to get in. For larger projects, having a key offers some disadvantages. You have to manage disseminating that key and the key lifecycle. But for a small project like this, where there are limited people who have access to the machine, in this case your own personal Pi, it is perfect. It means you will probably just have one key, you have access to it, nobody else does, uh, and therefore nobody else can access your Raspberry Pi. So it's much stronger security. It makes for a lot easier and faster logins as well. So you won't have to type in your password every time you log into a shell. You will just provide your username and it will log you in. This means that we've all been there when you type a password in and put a typo in you don't have to wait for it to tell you it's wrong before it'll let you try again you can just type the username in and go so it certainly saves time and it's worth doing it makes continuous integration a lot easier uh, ci with username and password is really not ideal having a key makes the whole process a lot more friendly and the last thing is, and it's nice advantage, but it's not the main reason. You don't, of course, have to remember a password or write it down or have it somewhere in a password safe. You don't have to. Uh, you just have to keep your key handy. So they're the reasons with the top one by far the most important for our particular project. Uh, they're the reasons we're going to do this. So let's get going. OK. So hopefully if you've powered up your Raspberry Pi and plugged a monitor and keyboard in, you will see this as your desktop. What we're going to do is we're going to be spending most of our time working in the terminal. So in the top left hand corner, you'll see a button for the terminal, which we're going to open now. So if you click on that, it'll open a new shell. And the first thing we're going to do is update our distribution to make sure everything is as up to date as it can be. So type in sudo apt get update. And now type in sudo apt get upgrade. With these two things done, we are all up to date in our distribution and we can start uh, enabling SSH on the Raspberry Pi. So by default, Raspberry Pi has come with SSH disabled for security reasons. So you have to plug a keyboard and mouse and a monitor into your Raspberry Pi at the start. I do believe there are set up ways around that but typically you will have to do it this way. So let's first enable SSH on this Raspberry Pi. You do it as follows, sudo systemctl enable SSH. With that done, we will now start the service. So SSH is a service that will run in the background. So the same command as before, but this time replace the enable with start, press enter. So now we've switched SSH on, which means uh, another computer on your local network will be able to access your Raspberry Pi. So let's just confirm that theory. We're going to connect to this Raspberry Pi from an uh, external computer, in my case, my desktop PC that I'm performing this recording on. But first off, I'll show you how to find out the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. I happen to know mine, but you might not know yours. So if you type in ifconfig at the command line, you'll get your um, network adapters. And one of them will show a local IP address like this. This one is my local IP address, INET 192.168.173. Mine is under the WLAN section because I'm connected to my Wi-Fi on my Raspberry Pi. 
If your Raspberry Pi is connected by Ethernet connection to your router, then it'll likely appear, well, it will appear up here in the Ethernet section. So with that in mind and with the distribution that's up to date and SSH enabled, I'm going to now connect from my desktop computer to my Raspberry Pi. I'm running Windows on my desktop computer, so I'm going to demonstrate this using Microsoft Windows. Therefore, I'm going to open a PowerShell. You can follow along with a Linux operating system and I think a Mac the same. It works, I think, exactly the same, but I'll be doing this in Windows. So having opened a PowerShell by typing PowerShell into my Windows start bar, I'm presented with uh, a PowerShell like this. I'm now going to uh, attempt to connect via SSH to my Raspberry Pi. So the SSH command is SSH username, which is Pi in this case, at, and then the IP address. So 192.168.1.73. Excellent, there we go, password. So I put my password in, whoops, type it correctly. And I now am connected to my Raspberry Pi from my desktop computer, fantastic. I'm just going to close that down. I'll come back to PowerShell later when I uh, demonstrate using a key, but for now we can close it down. So the next thing to do is to install the software that will let us create the public-private key pair. But before we do that, one step before is just in case you've installed a very light and streamlined version of Debian, run this command to make sure you have access to the PPAs. sudo apt-get install software properties common. Run that and let it run to its conclusion. Now that that is done, we can run sudo apt-get install openssh server to install the openssh toolset we need to create our keys. With that done, we are ready to go. But first we need to create the directory structure that openssh requires the keys to be within. So let's create the directory .ssh in our home directory. We can check we're in a home directory by doing pwd. So now we just need to create the .ssh folder. So mkdir.ssh. Fantastic. So now we have .ssh in our home directory. Now we need to set the permissions on that directory to the required 700. So that's done with chmod700.ssh. So those two things are required by OpenSSH to have the folder in your home directory for it to be hidden with a dot and for the permissions to be 700. So we've done what is required. Let's now navigate inside that folder and generate the keys. So we generate the keys using the SSH keygen tool that comes with OpenSSH. We're going to create an RSA key. So we use minus T RSA. And I'm going to use 1496 bit depth, so it's quite a complex key. And I'm going to give it a file name using the minus F flag of Raspberry Pi underscore key. So type that in. It will take probably 20 or 30 seconds to complete. And you'll be presented with a passphrase question. Excellent. So... We now have the request for a passphrase. You can just press enter on the passphrase, quest, passphrase question and then the confirmation. We don't need a passphrase in this context. So now let's do ls to have a look at what we've got in our .ssh folder. We've got a public and a private key, just what we wanted. The public key is denoted by the .pub. And the public key is the key that will be kept on the Raspberry Pi and will be provided to the client computers that are trying to connect. Now, OpenSSH does require one more thing, and it requires your public key to be in a file called authorized keys. And we can do that quite easily using the cat command. So cat raspberry pi underscore key dot pub, because we want to make the public key go into the authorized key files on the pi. There we go. And with that done, that is all we need to do on the Raspberry Pi to set it up. Now we just need to get the private key onto our desktop computer in this case, or into, onto any computer you want to connect to your Raspberry Pi from remotely. So I'm going to open up a PowerShell again. Here it is on my desktop computer. So this is my desktop computer you're looking at with this window. And I'm going to use a utility called Secure Copy, SCP, which works as follows. So I'm going to secure copy a file from the Raspberry Pi 
which is connected to via username and IP address 192.168.1.73 and then a colon followed by the file or folders I want to transfer. In this case, I just want to transfer a single file and I know it's located in my home directory under the hidden.ssh folder and it's called Raspberry Pi key. So that's the file I want to transfer. The destination is going to be in my user's home directory on my Windows machine. And as I'm already in my home directory, I can reference it with a dot forward slash. And then I'm going to go into the hidden directory dot SSH on my local computer. If that directory doesn't exist for you, just create it. And then I want it to be called the same as it is called on the Pi, Raspberry Pi key. There we go, I've transferred the key now. So on my desktop computer, I have the private key and on my Raspberry Pi in the authorized keys file, I have the public key. That's all we need to connect the two together. So let's see now if we can SSH onto the Pi from my desktop computer using the key and no password. So SSH 192.168.1.73 and then you use the minus I flag to reference the key file, which is what we didn't do before slash dot ssh slash raspberry pi underscore key. So now we're saying let's ssh onto the raspberry pi using this key file. Fantastic, it's working exactly as we want it to. We've not had to use a password, we've just been able to use a key. Of course, we're not any more secure than we were before because if I try to do this without the key, I can still connect with a password. So what we need to do now, the final stage, is to disable password authentication. So we're going to go back to the Raspberry Pi over here, and we're going to edit the SSH config file as follows. sudo nano, nano being the text editor, slash etc slash ssh slash sshd underscore config. Type that in, it'll go to the sshd config file. And if you page down about one, two, three times, Yep, page down three times, all the way down to here, <coughs> excuse me, you'll see a line that we can uncomment. So delete the pound sign or the hash sign and change password authentication to no. That means it will no longer accept password as a form of authentication. <laughs> Get my words out. We just need to reset the service now for this to take effect. Service, pseudo service, SSH, restart. There we go. So let's just confirm this by going back to my desktop computer. Go back to your desktop computer like I'm doing and let's see if we can connect using a password. So just passing in this command. Permission denied. That's exactly what we want to see. It's not let us in with the password. But if we go and use the key, we're in. Perfect. So that concludes this video. Uh, I've shown you how to set up a public private key uh, authentication system for your Raspberry Pi and disable your username password authentication. So now nobody can brute force your Raspberry Pi and guess your password. Of course, you don't want to lose your key. Do look after your uh, private key. If you do lose it, you can always plug a keyboard, mouse and a monitor back into your Raspberry Pi to recover things and just follow this process again. Thank you very much for watching the video. Please do like and subscribe. It makes it worthwhile for me to do these videos and spend my evenings recording them. Okay, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video.